Good day everyone. Welcome to an Anius Productions review video where I will be in this in these few minutes talking about mainly boxes and other items that I had chosen to review. Reviews are actually more valuable than just a rating, so I'll be giving both to give you an idea on the quality of the item and whether it should be recommended. This video will cover a review about a book named How to Be a Vigilante by Luke Smithered. This book has actually got quite a an interesting presence within it. The story is actually structured in a way that I hadn't really expected from a superhero story. Now, this is not necessarily because the main character is trying to become a superhero. It's because it contains some quite lethal setbacks in trying to become a vigilante, which is partly mainly what the book is about. And I shan't say exactly how, but it is quite surprising, and most of what happened quite took me aback, because nothing what I expected from that book was there. Well, it was, but it wasn't at the same time. It's, it's rather hard to explain, but the structure and the events that happened in it, it they weren't what I thought they were going to be, so it wasn't saving me, so it took me by surprise. Uh, made it new for me. The subject was explored in a different way and I really liked that. The main character, Nigel Carmelite, has big ambitions and tries to achieve them um, by doing various sorts of things, going to the gym, trying to do uh, like karate type stuff and the like and he wants to become a proper vigilante because he's always wanted to do and he always believes that he could do something right for the world, do something right for his neighbourhood. So, he goes around and he makes his own costume, he dresses up and he actually fights people. He, he, he makes the proper effort and that's... You, you do get surprised about this as well because you actually think, he, he, you now know he's being serious about this. And you take him at, you, more seriously as well and give him more credit for things he's done. He, he doesn't just say it, he bloody does it to an extent which his physical condition is quite on the limit. It, it, he's pushing himself all the time throughout the book. Normally, that normally, but throughout his adventure, he ignores his limited physical capacity to arrive at his goals and some financial as well. But he really does do a good job. He's a try-hard character, and I really love that. And it, it's very, it's sort of very, it is very teenagerish. Even though Nigel is quite. I mean, he is an adult actually, he's got a proper job, he's very nice and well off, but he's, his dreams are always nagging at him. And this also seems like he's somewhat devolving, but evolving simultaneously. And that's, an, again, another fantastic point that Lucas tried to do with this book. Good point about this book. Um, this explores the sort of desires of becoming a superhero and the problems with doing it. So they make he makes clear points as to what these ideas are for becoming a superhero in the first place and how normally pe people like Nigel would try and think about them and you know try and get to that sort of milestone because they don't really know anything but they try and make an effort to get the things they need because th this is this is like this is the most important thing that's happened to Nigel in a long time and he's just boring otherwise and this is a big 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 part in his life so he, took, he takes it very seriously and because of that he does make a very huge difference to his family and himself and the way that he portrays it is very argumentative in a way, because it not only does it, does it explore the benefits um, on oneself and surroundings, it also explores the uh, bad points about it as well, which I think is very fair, so it's not biased in any way, and that is fantastic, because it's not at all, again, as I said, biased, but it's also not concentrating on the good parts like most books do, at least the ones I've read and so it gives it a fair chance so it's sort of giving you information 
while telling the story at the same time, which I find is absolutely fantastic. The expectations of the book, another good point about this, the expectations of the book, they're actually way higher than I would have, well, the output from the book, I should say, is way higher than I would have expected, because, um, as I said, as I mentioned earlier, the what I expected from it was it to be rather the same, the the plot, the the timeline, it was all rather the same, either the hero, like, saves some people, then he gets into a bit of trouble, then he finds out something really bad, da 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 cliche, a bit. But this is really not like a cliche. Really isn't. It's quite different from the normal superhero uh, sort of storyline, and I really like that. Uh, it's, it's concentrated on a central theme, and it's the same theme, or a very similar theme, but it's explored in a completely different way, which makes it very new and very interesting. And I love that about a book. Because the way that people like to turn it on their heads and twist it around a bit, they, it really does help to try and enlighten an, one's other perspective about a certain viewpoint on what subject or thing that the book is centred on, a thing that drives a character, and that is fantastic. And I love to see that. And Luke's done it really well. He's really tried with this, and I really, really enjoy it in that way. Yeah. Another good point about it, it it returns to familiar structures often, but not too often. It does, um, its environment is quite new and unexplored, but it does dip its toe into the water for familiarity, so it doesn't completely alienate you. And I do like that. It means it, it gives us a sense of direction in the story, and you don't always have so much unexpected at you because then you don't know what's happening so it does provide a very good thing for storyline and for character development and I just enjoyment that's that's the main thing and I love it I really really like it that way and the another good point about it the way that Nigel progresses throughout the story and how he encounters problems and how he deals with them is well, it's, it's very well described, and I can perfectly imagine the character doing so, because they are, the, the problems, they're very serious, and they're very down-to-earth, they're not at all, well, they're really, really close to reality, which makes the validity of the book quite solid, so it does impact you in that way, and because of it being sort of fantasy. You know it's not real, but you can completely understand the character's position and their way of trying to pr provide solutions to various obstacles that they have to overcome. And it really, really does get interesting. You become very interested, at least I did, while reading this. I really wanted to know everything about Nigel within, I don't know, 50 pages. 50 pages, that's a bit stupid, but really quite early on in the book. I really wanted to know everything about Nigel because he he does get described very well within this story and everything is set to a not too serious but serious enough for you to feel something towards it and that helps and I love that and it's just it's very good for that. Um, another good point about it which I find is the best point as well is that the mood throughout the book does change. It becomes from, it changes from at the start to from yeah, plodding along, not very interesting, to light-hearted and adventurous to having times of really, really dark events that you just, you just clutch your chest in such a fashion, you just, you just wouldn't believe it. It's completely unexpected and completely thrown in your face. And you just blink a few times. You have, I had to reread quite a few of the sentences again just to be sure that I knew what I read. And I just trying to comprehend it in the first place is the hard thing to do. So he does know how to create a sort of very, very realistic book in a way that the consequences outweigh themselves. In at, at least how the story is portrayed in this book, it's it's. It's very, very, very good. It throws a lot of new stuff at you, and it really does keep it up as well, while also remaining familiar, which does enhance it. And because of that, 
um, because it just throws new stuff in your face. It just enhances the also the theme, not just the story, because then you have another perspective and you add it to the list, and it's just it's just fantastic. As far as I know, there aren't any but actually bad points about it, but it really does pertain a lovely, lovely story, and the world within it is very understandable. So it really does become a, a thing of historical significance as well because you may depending on who you are the reader may find that the situation that they have had before compared to the character is very similar so they can also feel for the character easier and they know that it's also it also again ha enhances the validity of it because they know that this this and this is true and there's very little of it that could be mm, that's not what happens really but it's very close to the truth, so that's basically what you need if you want to create a surreal storyline and a surreal setting. That's what you need. Uh, I really appreciate that actually in a book. So I really enjoyed this. I really, really enjoyed this. This is actually one of the few books that get me. It's, it's, the way I can describe it the easiest is that it gets me to put down the book and gives me a few minutes to process what I've just read. I mean, not I didn't actually put down the book because of that while, while I was reading it. Um, I only did that at the end to actually just recall how it started and how it ended and just what point got to the end. Because the end is really a table turner. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but I, I must suggest you read it. Just because of the variety in it and the interesting um, ability of the fact that it can retain some familiarity. The character is in itself is very interesting and the story is absolutely fantastic. I really really enjoyed this sort of perspective of a wannabe superhero. <laughs> wannabe superhero is a bad expression, but you know what I mean. So, there you go. I recommend this book, and I would give it a 9 out of 10. That is, it's, it's for me, at this point, it's very well executed, and I immensely love it. I mean, it was fantastic. I really, really recommend it. If anyone, um... Is, deserve, is wanting an easy read, but very interesting read. An, an easy, interesting, and absorbing read. Then, you ought to read this book, How to Be a Vigilante by Lucas Method. It's very good. I really, really recommend it. So, with that review over, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like the video because then it tells me if you like this sort of content and if you want to, if you need to cover a specific book put it down in the comments and I'll look at it um, although the only thing, the only restriction with it that I'd have to make is that the book has to be on Kindle okay because I find having Kindle to be much easier than having a physical book because it just takes less space you can have a virtual library on it and you can have loads of books without it, without it taking off physically a thin book so whatever books you suggest please uh, if if you can see if it's in Kindle and if it is then you can post it down in the comments and I will definitely have a look at it so now that I've finally finished with it thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video bye bye